The Rusty Humphrey Show. For Atlanta, from Atlanta. I met this guy, oh, a couple of weeks ago in Minneapolis, and uh, then he's been on the program before, promoting a movie that he has uh, written, he has directed. It is called uh, The Undefeated, is the uh, Sarah Palin documentary, opens tonight here in Atlanta. Steve Banna, welcome back to the Rusty Humphrey Show, sir. How are you? Rusty, thanks for having me on. Okay, so you, why, why Atlanta? Well, we wanted to go to 10 markets that not just have a big tea party, but people are engaged in the conversation. I mean, you guys are the home of a lot of great talk radio. A lot of guys have come out of here. You've got, and you've got a population down here that's very engaged. Uh, it's a lot of working class people, middle class people, and that's what the movie's about. So it's a natural for us. All right. So I've, I went and did a little research. I know shame on me, but I actually did a little uh, looking in here. So first story, okay, this is out of the Atlantic. Sarah Palin movie debuts to empty theater in Orange County. When the clock struck 12.01 a.m., AMC theaters in Select City were permitted to start showing The Undefeated and basically talks about how nobody was there. It was an empty theater. So is the movie already a bomb? That's what he's saying. Well, 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 well I think Andrew Breitbart had uh, his uh, Breitbart TV go down. There were actually six people. Well, look, the, the theater manager asked uh, the, the distributor, Harry Potter's plan, and they said, hey, look, we're going to look some, put some o- other screens open. We don't know if anyone's going to come. We're, no, we're Palin working. Nista, well, Palin Nista is, you know, p- people that want to go to this film have jobs. They're not going to go see a movie at quarter of one in the morning. <laughs> I would, hey, I, I made the thing, and I would not go at 1245 in the morning. I heard about it this morning, but listen here's i think here's the larger story these guys on the left we're now going to have them on the run you know the cult the, the, they've they've controlled the culture the reason i made this film is that the meme they had out there is this is caribou barbie mm-hmm. who's a bimbo in a in a a right-wing ideologue and if you look at her record if you look at what she accomplished if you look at her life her life is she's a very engaged executive Okay, she has what I call applied intelligence that can solve big problems, which she solved in Alaska, and she brought everybody together. She had Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, and Republicans in a coalition. That's why she had 88%. So they were able to take her narrative and to craft something that is completely and totally false, and they refused to address the facts. That's fine. We're going to win. This, the Larry Burks, uh, Larry O'Connor, just uh, Andrew Breitbart called me. The first showing in Orange County was half full, mm-hmm. standing ovation at the end, people going crazy. So, uh, look, the film's got to find its audience. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's got to find its audience. But the left taking these little uh, the Rotten Tomatoes the other day yeah. had it in where the reviews are going to go and said uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a documentary in science fiction and fantasy. I don't. You know, what is the science fiction fantasy? It's a documentary. I understand. No, they're trying to be snarky. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're trying. To, I mean, what are they saying that you lied about? It? Do they say anything? No, about No, nobody. By the way, even the even the critics are trying to take it on. And say, I say that's why Act Two is so. You saw the film. Is the Act Two is is like a Harvard Business School case study where I go to to, to Alaska and take on where she took on the Murkowski. She took on the Republican machine. She took on a compromised political class, a corrupt political class, and she took on big oil, crony capitalism, kind of what we've got here in the United States today. Mm-hmm. She took it on, and she beat it, okay? And she did it with these civil servants called the Magnificent Seven who had resigned under Murkowski. And, and you would think the Democrats would respect that. I would think that you know, Newsweek magazine, here's where they're starting to crater. Newsweek magazine, Peter Boyer, went out to Pella to the premiere and mm-hmm. came back, and Tina Brown had a cover story on Monday of Governor Palin on the cover. And with Peter Boyer doing a very even-handed article. Now, Newsweek's been the biggest attack dog against her. That night on MSNBC, Lawrence O'Donnell took the last eight minutes of his show and deconstructed the article. His head blew up on national TV. <laughs> it, it blew up so badly that Carl Bernstein the next night had to say, look, you got to chill out. You can't, you know, they, they can't handle the fact that guys like Peter Boyer or even Newsweek magazine or guys in the Washington Post that are, are looking at this and saying, you know what? She actually does deserve to be at the same table as Governor Pawlenty and Governor Romney. That this woman is an incredibly accomplished woman. This is not Caribou. This film drives the stake in Caribou Barbie. All right, let's answer. So I'm going to ask you some of the questions. Steve Bannon here, writer, director of the new movie, The Undefeated Sarah Palin. It's the Sarah Palin documentary opening in 10 cities tonight across the yes. country, uh, here in Atlanta as well. And then it opens to more in a few yes, weeks, right? We're gonna, if it works like we hope it works, as we, we're going to roll it out throughout the nation and then it'll be in DVD streaming. Everybody in the country is going to get a chance to see this film. You're, I mean, you're not expecting, it's any documentary, you're not expecting to be full theaters every night, right? No, no, no. Listen, first off, th- th- do you know how unusual this is first off i think it's the only conservative documentary ever to be in a multiplex in in the summer number two it's it it, it's it it it, we just dropped it on amc six weeks ago of these these screens have been booked for six months the summer this month the harry potter opening Mm -hmm. this is where the studios and the theaters make all their money except for christmas right this is the big time to have a film 
that's actually in a multiplex on, on to take that marginal screen and actually give it to a documentary is extraordinary. In, in addition, you know, Michael Moore had twenty five million dollars or twenty million dollars of P&A, you know, ad money to, to make advertisements, to be on TV. Uh, Al Gore had ten or fifteen million dollars. We've got you know five hundred thousand dollars. The distributors putting up X amount of money mainly for social networking. We have no TV ads. We have very small paper ads, but we're doing it kind of you know as capitalists kind of do. I, I'm not whining. I'm saying the rea- right. the reality is is we're going to make this picture work. And it, it, here's what I think it is: people are so shocked by the story that word of mouth has said you got to see this film. You saw that at, at right online. Right. So that's what we're we're just you know I'm I'm a I'm a free enterprise capitalist. Take my lumps when I got to take them, but I, I find that the hits on the left are, it's a little bit childish. And here's what gives me great satisfaction, is that we're bigger than that, we're tougher than that. This picture, what they hate is that we've changed the narrative on Governor Palin, and that's going to drive them crazy. And they're going to have to live with it because people are going to see her. She told Peter Boyer that she finally feels like she's being able to get her lost narrative that was taken away from her in the early days of the McCain campaign. Now, everybody's going to be watching the numbers. I know that the opening weekend is the most important for any movie, sure, right? Sure, sure. What number do you hit and you go, okay, I'm happy? Well, I, it, I don't know if we want to. Really, that's the distributor's call, Arc Entertainment. I'm we, talking about you. It's your movie. What <laughs> makes you What makes you happy? What makes me happy? 400 what, million. I want to no, no, do no. Spider-Man. Here's, no. here's, here's what would make me happy is I have Saturday be as good as, as, as Friday and then and word of mouth. What mm-hmm. really Look, the first nights, because we didn't really have things to advertise this, is that what we're hoping is that and we're going to have camera crews looking at people coming out. It's really to look at, this is a commercial audience, right? This is not going to write online or one of these. We've tested this film a lot. It's actually to see that people got to throw down eight bucks is what the, what the response is afterwards. I understand from Orange County it was terrific today. So we feel, we're feeling very good. But you, n- you never know. The film, this is like, it's not like giving birth. That's when you actually make it. Today is like the first day of kindergarten when you're a parent. Okay. You've got to let the, they've got to go, you know, on the road. Are you dying right now, honestly? I mean, you just go, oh, God, please. As a filmmaker, you, you know, the, the, particularly this film is that we tried something very different here and to tell a story in a very dramatic fashion. And it's a, it, by the way, it's two hours long. My partners, even the guys at AMC said, you know, for a commercial thing, can you cut it? And I said, the, the, the problem is in act two. To make the definitive case of the facts of how how tough it was up there, I need to leave that. Okay, in. what's Act Two? Act Act Two is where she is in Alaska and she's taking on big oil. She's taking on the corrupt political establishment. It's forty minutes long and it's very dramatic, but she, it's kind of like a Mister Smith goes to Washington where she's fighting the bad guys. Mm-hmm. And that could get because we go into you, when you come out of there, you actually understand something about energy policy. You understand how important these gas pipelines are. You understand how important Alaska is to the United States as far as its energy potential. But particularly given world energy markets in Saudi Arabia. You really come out of there. Uh, here's what you understand. That's Governor Sarah Palin is no bimbo. I mm-hmm. mean, this she had a very sophisticated strategy of how to change the people in Alaska into a working interest in their oil. It was very complex, very complicated, and she did it and with overwhelming support. At the end of the day, these bills were passed by 48 to 1 margins. I mean, it was mm-hmm. just enormous how she put that coalition together, then how she went to town halls. And so one of the problems we have in Washington this week with this debate is that the American public has been so, they have not explained to them how the debt relates to the deficit and how that relates to jobs. Well, because they're lying about it, right? Right. right. The and president's but, lying about and it. And they haven't educated people. What Governor Palin did with the same kind of complexity, she went around to these little town halls with charts and she explained to people the complexity of her tax policy. She explained to people this complicated way of how you bid for these, uh, to build this this gas pipeline. And she mm-hmm. did it in a very plain smoken manner. And, and by the way, once the city citizenry understood what she wanted to do, they had her back. And yeah, but the plain press. spokenness, that's just her being stupid. She's just not as smart as the Ivy League people, right? You know, having gone to, one of the reasons I want to make this film, having gone to Harvard Business School, I will tell you. You went to Harvard she, Business School? Oh, yes, sir. Do you, you went just went and visited? No, no, actually went and graduated. Oh, you gra- okay, because <laughs> I went and visited one time. I just don't know if it did. Well, uh, she's just, listen, Governor Sarah Palin is as smart as anybody that went to Harvard Business School with, and she's as smart as anybody I worked at Goldman Sachs with. This is a very smart, tough, focused woman. Well, I know you did a lot of research before you went to Alaska, before you worked on this. Was there any surprises or did you know it all before you started the camera? I knew I knew the I knew the the, the details of the substance. What, what, the, one of the things I didn't know, first off, the scale of Alaska is something that is awe inspiring. That becomes a character in the film. It, yeah, it's, it's like you want to fly from like like part of America, you know, like Seattle, Texas is about the size of Alaska, right? Exactly. People don't understand it. It's, you know, when I was in Seattle, it's like another five hour flight. Or so it's, it's it's insane. It's it's so big. It's so cold. It's so it's it's so huge. The scale and the vastness of it. You you I recommend you go. Everybody should go up there and see it. 
Number two is is, is her, hum, her two things: her humility and how. Although she, I call her McLuhan-esque figure, she's drenched in media worldwide, probably outside of Princess Kate, the most photographed woman, the most followed person in the world. And yet nobody knows her story. She, she, she's not very open. That story is in, in, in plain sight has been up there about what happened in Alaska. And the other is her humility. We could really never get any footage of her telling her own story except the day she, the day she resigned, she went through what she accomplished. She's really never gone out and told that story. I think that's one of the reasons that they were kind of searching for doing these vignettes that they wanted me to do that I turned down. I think this film, and I think you can see it, she, she now feels that her narrative has been told, her story has been told, and I think it's, I think it's made a change in her. I think in seeing Fox, she seems to be, I think, more confident because that story's mm-hmm. out there. And even the lefties are coming after me. Uh, on some of these reviews, very few of them, they say, oh, he didn't include Trooper Gate, didn't include Katie Kirk. You go through the same list. Of okay, why didn't you? Because it's all marginalia. This is <laughs> the, 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 this woman did not go after school uniform problems. She cut the Gordian knot of problems that had not been done, not been solved in Alaska for 30 years. Okay. These were massive problems with the resources, with big oil. How big oil had seeped down into every part of commercial life in Alaska. She went after the beating heart of that. She focuses on big problems that are intractable problems and comes up with solutions that many people can buy into. Trooper Gate is not in the top hundred. That it was dismissed anyway. The media has covered it. It says when they start throwing that stuff up there, I say, is that the best you can do? Right. By the way, there's other things I didn't cover. Number number one. Oh, by the way, she had a baby during this period. And I never even bring that up, right? You see her mm-hmm. pregnant, but I don't bring that. Number two, the, 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 the gay marriage, she, she signed a thing for, I think, same-sex couples to have benefits in Alaska. Although she's a very devout Christian, and, 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 and it's not her beliefs, she said, hey, the Constitution, the founders, this is what they wanted. She went to the Supreme Court. The guy said, this is constitutional. She signed it against a lot of heat. Mm-hmm. She signed it. So she wasn't a social ideologue. She's kind of a libertarian in that regard. Right. Although she has very strong religious beliefs, I think her beliefs are kind of libertarian as far as politics. He goes, and, and I, I never, there were so many things I could have covered on additional great stuff she did. I just didn't have time to Was do she it. a quitter in Alaska? I think people are going to have to come to the, I don't believe so. I think in the film we lay out between the four requests and putting her in bankruptcy and, and, and the coalition, Peter Boyer, if I can recommend something to your, your uh, audience, is to go see the uh, Get Newsweek magazine's cover story. Boyer d- does a very good job. She had put together a coalition of Democrats, Republicans, et cetera. The Republican establishment did not want her back. Mm-hmm. She is a reformer like a Mr. Smith goes to Washington. So they were glad to get her out of town. The, the coalition of independents, libertarians, and Democrats, the Democrats have basically turned on her because they looked at her as a national figure now. So she had a very different political environment to come back to. Uh, the FOIA request, they were trying to put her in bankruptcy. The state of Alaska was running up bills. I think she came to a conclusion that it was the right thing to do. I believe it was the right thing to do. In the film, I don't, I'm not judgmental in the film. Right. I lay it out and let you come to a conclusion. But I tell people, if Governor Palin ever decides to get back into elective office, she's going to have to go make that case. I mean, I think the film does a very good job. I think it's a very poignant moment. You can tell because this is a woman who comes from nowhere. When the film starts off, She's as obscure as anybody in your listening audience. Right. She's working on a commercial fishing vessel with a, a school teacher father and a blue collar husband that works up on the North Slope as a foreman. And, you know, she, she, she's Walmart Nation. She's not George Bush, Al Gore, John Huntsman, Mitt Romney. She's not a son or daughter of the American aristocracy. She did not go to Harvard. Okay. Right. She does not, she's, she's not part of the political cultural elite in Alaska, which is out of the loop. She is out of the loop in a place that's out of the loop. And, and how does a person like that? Basic Walmart nation. How do you not just make your way in the world? How do you have great change in the world? And I think that's why even people that don't like her, and I've, I've shown this to a lot of liberals, mm-hmm. who don't like her policies, and more importantly, she rubs them the wrong way personally. Those people come out of this film, when they look at her, and they come out and they have a grudging admiration for her mm-hmm. toughness and her tenacity, and quite frankly, her intelligence. All right, we've got to take a quick break. My guest is Steve Bannon. He is the writer and director of the uh, new movie, The Undefeated. It is the Sarah Palin documentary. opens tonight in Atlanta. Weekday afternoons at 3, right after Rush, on 640 WGST and 640WGST.com. The Talk of Atlanta. 